Thank you all so much for clicking on today's Dallas Cowboys report video. We will break down the trade candidates, the likely, the unlikely, the guys already on their way out of the door in Dallas. Before we do that, though, if you haven't already, please subscribe. The Cowboys might be bad, but we're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to break down everything going on around the Dallas Cowboys every single day. So if you're a Cowboys fan, hit that big red button and subscribe. We're starting with the guys who are about to be out in Dallas. Don Tari Poe, the report that came in this morning, he and Daryl Worley, who we'll get to, well, they're going to be cut if no one decides to trade for them. Don Tari Poe signed a two-year, $8.5 million deal in the offseason, and he's just sucked. I mean, there is no way around it. I thought Poe against Washington was better but that's not really saying anything. Seven tackles this year for the Cowboys. Pride and joy of Fatty's only 2020, a complete disaster this year, though I still wanted snacks. Anyway, one pressure. His pressure rate is below 1%. It's unacceptable. No one really wants him or Daryl Worley. The reality is for the Cowboys, if you can get a seventh round pick, you take it and run because it saves you some money and it doesn't even matter who that seventh round pick ends up being. Worley's in the same boat as Dontari Poe. Allegedly had been going rogue within the scheme. I wonder if Worley and Poe, by the way, were two of the players who badmouthed the coaching staff to the media. I don't know. Just throwing that out there as a possibility. Worley's been benched since he got roasted on this play, by the way, by Christian Kirk against the Arizona Cardinals. These coverage stats are horrible. I mean, that is absolutely not okay. And I emphasized this on yesterday's video. You're not going to get much, if anything, for Daryl Worley or Dontari Poe. But you are right to at least try to trade them away. Get whatever you can to save some money because they're not long-term fits. We'll break down some more candidates here in just a second. But I want you guys to scroll on down to the comments and get your votes in. The Cowboys are sellers, as they should be. So who do you want them to trade away? If you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Now we're going to break down a bunch of different potential trade candidates here for the Dallas Cowboys. My common emphasis here is that if you're Dallas, your season's over, it is now time to sell players who are not long-term fits. That could be guys you're not going to pay next year or this offseason. Could be veterans who don't fit for whatever reason. Could be guys in the last year of their contract. And if you can get more or equal to what you would get in the comp pick process, now is the time to sell because you get it a year early and that adds extra value. So the first guy on this list is one you might not want to see, but it's one we have to discuss. That is Alden Smith because in terms of the Cowboys' feasible trade chips, the attractive ones, Alden Smith I think is kind of high up there. And for good reason. He offers really good pass rush ability. He's been a great find for the Cowboys, and he's super cheap for a new team. The question the Cowboys have to answer really right now is are they going to re-sign Alden Smith after the season ends? If the plan is yes, then you keep him. Don't trade him away because I think you'd get maybe a fifth round pick, a fourth if you're lucky. Maybe it's the conditional style here. But the thought process for all these guys is, option A, are we going to pay him? If the answer is yes, well then just hold on to them. It's fine. If the answer is no, then you have to shop him. And you have to figure out, okay, what do we think he's going to get for us in the compensatory pick game, if anything? Because if you don't pay Dak, you're going to spend a lot of money. And then, oh no, you don't get anything there either. But if you're not going to pay him, figure out what his comp pick value is going to be. For Alden Smith... I think it's a round of fifth rounder. Robert Quinn last year went for a fourth. So here's my trade package. Or it's a fourth round comp pick, I should say. I'll make it a conditional pick here. Seattle needs more pass rush help. I think Smith would fit really well for them. A 2020 fifth round pick, that could be worth up to a fourth rounder. So a full round higher than what Everson Griffin went for. And if you're not going to pay Alden, I think you should strongly consider trading him. But get your votes in here. Again, this is a, a pay or trade question for you. What would you guys do? Let me know what you think. It's a simple P for pay, T for trade. If you're not going to pay him, you should strongly consider trading him before the deadline. Michael Gallup is the next player up here. And you guys know I've been anti-Michael Gallup trade. The conditions, though, in the situation the Dallas Cowboys are in 
has drastically changed. I didn't want to trade Gal because A, he had two, and I should say three chief years left on his deal when the season began. The tricky part here for Gallup is that the Cowboys are bad, and I think there is value in Michael Gallup. Now, his value in terms of what he could get in a trade has dropped from this year to where it was when the season began. And that's not really his fault. It's really because, well, the Cowboys' offense can't go downfield because the offensive line has been super bad, and as a result, eh, you know, he hasn't put up the same type of production. But if you could get a top 50, top 40 pick, I would consider it. Now, the Cowboys' receiving core is its best part in the overall offense right now. Like, the receiving core is still really, really good. I'm not going to give away Michael Gallup for free because I don't have to move him right now. I can move him in the offseason. I can move him next NFL trade deadline. So I'm not just going full-on fire sale and trading away a cheap, young, talented, productive player. But if I get a good enough offer, I think his minimum top 50 pick, maybe at that point I would consider it. Maybe you package him later on in the offseason as part of a player trade to get you a defensive asset. I would consider that. I'm not saying do it, but I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't at least consider that process. So with that in mind, what would you want in a trade for Michael Gallup? I've seen people throw out a third-round pick. Not interested. I'm not trading him away for a third-rounder. A, a mid-to-early second starts to pique my interest. An outright first-rounder. Oh, I think I might have to do that one, but let me know what you guys think in the comments section. All right, time for some secondary players here who are on the, the last years of their contracts. Chidabe Awuzie, who I still like, but again, you have to make this decision now. Are you going to pay Awuzie? If the answer is yes, then okay, keep him. I don't think that they're going to. And then it becomes, okay, well, what could you potentially get in the comp pick process? Probably a fifth or a sixth rounder. So shop him. If you get a fifth or a sixth rounder now as he comes back from injury, which really does, I think, hurt your chances of pulling that off, then I think you trade him away. Because he's not going to help you enough this year. And you lose him for a, a, a draft pick. If you can get that same draft pick now, you do it. It's not that hard. Now, Wuzier is still this Cowboy's best cornerback. And I think you can make an argument that it would make life easier on Trevon Diggs, not having to cover number one corners over and over again. So of the secondary guys we're discussing, I don't mind Awuzie here. I think he is a decent player. He's been better than Diggs has been because Diggs has been up and down in his first year playing. But again, you're focused on the future. This season's cooked. You're not going out and trading for a bunch of players to maybe make a run to get the, to get the NFC East and get blown out in the first round of the postseason doesn't benefit you at all, so you should be shopping guys like Awuzier and seeing what you can get back. Now, a good deal for you guys is available with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com bet and use the promo code that you see on your screen. It is Cowboys125. That'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. And for new BetUS customers only, available for the rest of the month of October, we'll hook you guys up with a Cowboys jersey. So email us, cowboys at chatsports.com. Once you've signed up, deposited, place your first bet. It's email us, cowboys at chatsports.com. Com. The free Jordan Lewis campaign has also been canceled. Uh, final year of his contract. Uh, the one argument that I think I'll make and say, hey, maybe you keep Jordan Lewis is A, you don't get much of an offer for him, but B, maybe with a woozy a back, do you want to try him at safety? Maybe he could be a better safety since he is a pretty good tackler, keeps him away from having to do a bunch of man coverage against better uh, athletes than he is. He hasn't been great this year. Look, it's a tough job being a slot corner in the NFL, but maybe you could set yourself up for, hey, you know what, we move him to safety and we sign him on the cheap. That could be an option, but again, you have to do the right thing by your organization here and at least consider moving on from him. Otherwise, it doesn't really make much sense. No benefit in keeping a guy and not getting much back for him in the comp pick process. So Lewis, I would strongly consider trading here for the Dallas Cowboys. Moving on now to Xavier Woods, who, of the guys we've discussed, he's been fairly decent and consistent at times this year still. He is, again, final year of his contract. And by a pretty significant margin, Xavier Woods is this team's best safety. But again, 
Is he in their long-term plans? You should know by now if this is someone you plan on re-signing. And if it's not, then shop him. It might only be for a day three pick, but that's probably what you'd get if you're lucky in the comp pick process. And oh, by the way, if you trade one of those defensive backs away and still lose the rest via free agency, well, then you can only have four comp picks that, that come your way. You still might be able to max those out. So you have to do a good job of planning out your future with what you want to do in free agency, which admittedly is very tough in the middle of a season. I also wanted to mention Sean Lee here. Now, Lee isn't fully back from his hernia injury, although I think he might come back this week. He's a veteran who would certainly help a contender. I don't think you'd get very much for him. You're talking maybe a seventh round pick. I also wonder if Sean Lee not only wants to be, but probably might choose to be what I call the, the forever cowboy. There's not very many players who have played their entire NFL career with just the Dallas Cowboys. I think Sean Lee could be that guy. I think that makes sense for the Dallas Cowboys. So I would at least explore it. But I think in, in Sean Lee's instance, I'd see what he wants to do. Because I don't want to upset Sean Lee. I think he's a great defensive mind. That's somebody that I actually want to have as a coach down the road. So you can explore it, sure, but I wouldn't just give him away for nothing. A player I would give away is Dorrance Armstrong because he continues to play 20 snaps per game. He's got, I guess, 1.5 cheap years left on his deal. Trade him to free up snaps for better, younger players. Or I guess should say just better or younger players. Why Dorrance Armstrong continues to play over Randy Gregory and Bradley and I, I do not understand. Stop it. Dorrance Armstrong is a jag. He has been just a guy for this Dallas Cowboys team. Gregory's better. I want to see what Bradley and I can do. Kind of the same vein with trading away some corners. You can see what Reggie Robinson can do for you. So if I'm Dallas, hey, I'm getting rid of Armstrong and just getting something back in return. Now kind of at the heart of this discussion for the Cowboys is what exactly their plan is for 2021, 2022, etc. Is this full-on blow it up and rebuild time type Y for yes or type N for no now if you're typing in your Y for yes here they're kind of in a tricky spot because there are a lot of players that they've paid and I know a lot of you guys want to deal these guys coming up that's why we're going to discuss them but guys who got paid can be fairly tough to trade and it makes more sense to just cut the fat and take the loss on these guys if you really want to blow it up altogether. Now, one guy you're probably not going to be able to find a trade partner for is Tyrone Crawford, who I know the team likes in that locker room, but he's been bad. Ever since that hip surgery in the bar fight, he has not been remotely the same caliber of player. He's owed about $4 million for the rest of the year. There's no cap savings if you cut him because he's a vested bet veteran right now, excuse me, I don't think there's going to be a great chance of the Cowboys finding any takers for him. Let's talk now about Zeke because so many of you have brought him up in the comments section. Elliott's contract is not one that I would consider very movable. The Cowboys saved a little under $6 million over the next two years combined if they could find a trade partner. And the new team would still owe Zeke about $10 million per year. Since Bill O'Brien has already been fired, I'm not sure how many teams out there want to offer the Cowboys a draft pick to take on a $10 million contract for a back who has struggled badly with fumbling issues. And I think for the Cowboys organization, they still believe in Zeke. So I'm not sure they're going to move him. Look, I'm down to have the conversation. He might make more sense as an off-season trade. I'm just not going to get my hopes up if that's something you guys want to trade away Zeke Elliott. The problem with the guys we're discussing right now is that they made bad contract decisions. They paid the linebacker and the running back instead of the quarterback and the cornerback, and it's been a big-time problem. So let me know in the comments what you think the Cowboys' biggest contract mistake is. Many of you, I think, will type in Jalen Smith, and I will fully admit that I liked the deal at the time. Jalen was coming off a great 2018 season, and he has not remotely been the same player since then. It has been a bust contract. The problem with trading Jalen right now is that if you trade him 
A, the new team has to pay him $10 million per year thereabouts. I am not sure who's really interested in doing that. And even though the cap's kind of fake, you lose $1 million in cap space over the next two years if you trade him. It doesn't actually help you. What you could see happen here is that, J is that J Jalen Smith could be moved next year. That could make more sense. In the offseason, with the way his contract is structured, you might be able to, able to cut him. Not very many savings, but it is a possibility for the Dallas Cowboys. Want to move on now to Amari Cooper, who is playing at a very high level, but I've seen this brought up in the comments, so I wanted to acknowledge it here. His contract, especially compared to Zeke and Jalen and Crawford, is much easier for the Cowboys to trade. But unless you are fully blowing it up and entering a multi-year rebuild, which I don't think you have to do right now, and even if that is the case, you're drafting quarterback and you probably want a good receiver for him, I'm not going to move Cooper. Because maybe you want to do it in a year or two once you have to pay Gallup, but his contract is not that ridiculous for this Cowboys team, and he's playing really well. So unless you get a major offer, at least a first rounder, I'm going to keep Cooper. Demarcus Lawrence, meanwhile, we will wrap up with him. You guys don't want to admit it because, oh, the sacks aren't very good. And yes, Tank is overpaid. He's still your best defensive player. He has shown a, he has gotten much better since I think that knee injury he suffered against the Falcons going away right now, coming off several good games in a row. And more importantly, there's no real cap savings if you trade him over the next two years because you just restructured his contract. Now, if you just want to take, you know, take whatever deal you can get, cut your losses, and enter a full scale rebuild, I'm okay with that. If your goal is to compete, you know, next year or two years from now, Tank Lawrence still helps you do that. So I know a lot of you are upset by that contract, and he has been overpaid because the sack production has not been there, but he's one of your only good defensive pieces. Maybe that's the guy you keep and then try and find the rest of the pieces through the draft if your goal is to not blow it up over the next two years.